Hi, Jamie. How are you doing? Hi, Sweeta. I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Tell us what technology you work on at Cisco. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm a systems engineer with Cisco Systems in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, my background is in data center, though, so um, I've always had a, an interest in data center networking, compute, and storage. Um, and and in recent years, along with many others, um, yeah, very keen interest in, in automation and and network and infrastructure programmability. So that's kind of my general interests and, and focuses at the moment. What does network programmability mean to you? To me, network programmability is about, um, yeah, really just optimizing and, and creating efficiencies in, in your day-to-day -day work. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a mindset as much as it is anything else. So you recently shared a very cool automation use case with the community. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, so my most recent contribution was um, for UCS um, and, you know, uh, labeled it PUS, so provisioning UCS from spreadsheet. So in this instance, um, the, the problem I had is that at the time I was, I was working in professional services and delivery, and um, I had a customer with some quite tight project timelines. And so in my case, um, I needed to find ways to be able to reduce the time it would take to implement um, the design in the customer's environment. And so um, I began, you know, exploring on, on DevNet and, and looking at the UCS tracks um, within DevNet as a starting point. And, you know, I found that there was over seven hours, I think, of, of content on, on DevNet for UCS programmability. And so, you know, using that as a, as a starting point, um, from there I was able to, um, you know, work on a solution uh, using the, the detailed design spreadsheet to be able to sort of ingest that information into, into Python and then to be able to automatically, um, using the UCS SDK, configure um, the UCS environment and the customer's um, in the customer's infrastructure. So really the end result was that um, the implementation time was reduced from what would have ordinarily, ordinarily been two weeks to a couple of days at the most. It was win-win really both for the customer and for myself, you know, um, in, in terms of the time it took to implement the solution. You can find Jamie's automation case uh, uploaded on our automation use case exchange on developer.cisco.com. Thank you so much, Jamie, for joining us today. One of the best parts of being a part of the DevNet family is that you connect with so many communities and leaders and mentors around you that inspire you and guide you and are always ready to help you around. Today, I'm joined by one such mentor from Melbourne, Australia, Rasika Nayanji. Rasika, you are a very active and a top contributor in the Cisco community. Cisco has also awarded you a designated VIP status. So share with us your journey and the experience which you had with the community over all these years. Is there any specific story or experience you would want to share with us? Yeah, I think uh, the, when I study for my CCI wireless, I didn't have any people to help. You know, I just go to this particular forum and ask questions. So then in 2013, when I got my CCI, that triggered a little bit. I asked some questions, people helped me. Why not helping them, at least somebody in the community? So that's how I started, you know, like uh, since then, I have been uh, for past seven years, you know, like the based on the contribution I'm given to the community, they have been picked me as a, one of the top contributor in the mobility section. You know, like uh, I think the, the best thing I have learned out of this thing, um, it is very difficult to persistently hanging on that kind of uh, contribution giving back. But once you do one year, six months, 12 months, then you become the, you know, you know the magic of this, you know, like uh, when you're giving time free, things coming free, you know, like you get enough time to help them like that. That will be the momentum you need to keep. Otherwise, a lot of people outside look and they said, oh, how I find time to spend like that. The magic is, you know, like giving that time freely you will get time free. You know, like uh, if you know that when you realize that's working, I have expanded that further, you know, like, and then I have my own blog and then even local community here. I just sometime uh, go and coordinating, supporting this Cisco user group meetup, whichever the way, you know, like happiness you get out of these activities, you can't measure, you know, like uh, even sometimes people come and get a response from our queries and then go happily. 
but even you know like you help someone in today you know like that feeling is enormous you know like i think that's the best thing i have taken so far for seven years i don't want to lose that you know like even sometime i wake up early in the morning and spend few hours you know like just responding because normal day to day everybody is busy you know like you don't expect to you have enough time to freely spend but spend at least 5 10 minutes that happiness you can't get anywhere else you know like uh, so this will be the my biggest message you know like do something good and feel how good that is you know like and then expand expand you like don't worry you know like you will get time back so look tell us about your role at cisco yeah so i've been at meraki now for about 3 years so one year was starting out in the mighty australia looking after the south australian patch and now i've been lucky enough to look after new zealand and the pacific islands uh, so there used to be some interesting territory trips before this covid thing came about um but yeah absolutely loving life at meraki so from a partners perspective the apis are bringing new rev- well revenue and profit streams for some of the partners So a couple of the use cases I guess in Australia for example there's Comcenter and they're using APIs uh, more on the management of the networking devices and they've now successfully managed 1000 and deployed devices for Australia post within minutes through the use of APIs as opposed to beforehand which would have been quite a tedious process so that's more on the automation side and from a customer's perspective the reason why they're using apis is to drive more revenue for the business in in my situation so i've got a number of customers who are using our cameras number one just for security but then with the use of apis they're building more analytics around what the cameras can see so an example being one of my customers is a shopping mall and when a, a customer's come through the camera is able to tell how old the customers that are walking past whether they're male or female um as well as how long they're spending in a specific region in the shopping mall so they can tell when a product is placed effectively and then they can also tell uh, when they should create targeted campaigns so say a female would walk past an advertising board maybe we switch that to a, a female generic product whereas if a male moved over maybe we have it to a more fail, uh, male focused at advertisement so there's two ways of looking at it but both of them are really helping out the partner and the customer community Kerry is a global channel director at Local Measure. What is Local Measure? I'll let Kerry answer that for you. Thank you, Shweta. So Local Measure is a next generation customer experience platform that helps a business identify, understand and engage with customers to drive loyalty. So tell me, Kerry, what Cisco technologies and in what way does Local Measure integrate in its solutions? Yeah so our flagship Cisco integration would be our API integration which is plug and play with Cisco wireless. What is your favorite part from Cisco DevNet? Oh my my part, favorite part of Cisco DevNet has got to be without doubt the networking and the community that surrounds it. So one thing that one of the ones that really sticks out in my mind is um I was actually attending a Cisco event it wasn't a DevNet but a similar partner event and we were invited to present on stage to to talk about you know um unlocking the power of wifi and really getting to know your customers better and i checked into my hotel and you know went through my normal process and it was one of the local major customers the hotel was a customer and uh i went to my room got on the wifi was finishing my slides for the next day i was getting up on stage in front of about 100 cisco partners in thailand and something caught my eye on the corner of the room and actually my name was embroidered on my pillowcase and what what happened was um you know that this hotel had actually just looked at you know as soon as i booked because they had the technology they could see my preferences they could see what kind of things i like they they know, knew i loved design and detail and they just did a very simple thing which completely took me away from what i was doing and made me go over and touch it and sort of you know had so many questions and it was just a great way for that hotel which wasn't an expensive hotel to very quickly build a very strong brand connection with me and to this day that was 2 2 years ago to this day I've never stayed anywhere else and I never would and I continued so sort of got up on stage the next day and told everyone about customer experience and used this example and you know that evening when I got back the general manager came and found me and he'd had several bookings that day as a result of this word of mouth so it's just a reminder that you know the automation is absolutely necessary and we've got to keep our customers happy but using the technology to and and adding that human touch really it, you know uh, is key thank you bye
Bye.